Okay, these buildings were intentionally brought down through, through demolition. What role does Al Qaeda play in all of this? What role do the airplanes play in all of this? Because there are some people in the 9/11 movement that don't even believe in airplanes, but they're a minority. What is the connection between these two? Demolition, Al Qaeda, planes. Well, it goes back to a theory, um, a possibility that 9/11 might have been an attack uh, called a false flag attack, which is where you have um, a, a terrorist atrocity occurring, which is blamed on one group of people for political reasons, political advantage, but is actually carried out by another. Now, I'm not saying this is necessarily the case in, in 9/11, but it's something that we need to bear in mind. And in fact, this is the reason why I got involved in questioning the issues around 9/11, because as a former intelligence officer for the UK MI5. Um, in the 1990s, I ended up helping to blow the whistle on crimes and corruption within the UK spy um, in, uh, community. And in that case, the main reason why I and my ex-partner went public was because of a false flag attack that was perpetrated by the UK spy uh, agencies. And in this case, we had MI6, which is a sort of external intelligence gathering agency, funding uh, an assassination attempt against Colonel Gaddafi of Libya in 1996. And this went wrong, and this killed innocent people, and this was illegal under UK law. So. I'm obviously personally aware that false flag is a historic reality. And once you accept that, you have to suddenly then think, well, okay, who benefits from an attack like 9-11? Um, is it perhaps a, a bunch of Islamic extremists in a cave in Tora Bora? Or might there be other parties that do benefit? And uh, one of the big issues around 9-11 that does make people question is the uh, issue of put options, where some financiers somewhere bet that the stock of US and American airlines would plummet around that date and they put huge amounts of money on this and made huge profits and yet when it came to the 9-11 Truth Commission looking at this um, they just said well you know this doesn't go back to Al-Qaeda so we don't need to follow the money trail now I'm sorry if you're looking at a major crime scene um, and you look at well someone made money on the back of that then you have to wonder well are they the people who perhaps perpetrated the attack so that's the linkage is yes the laws of physics indicate that the towers didn't come down the way that we've been told they did um, and therefore, there are questions around who might have set any explosives that were set and that sort of thing. So we have to accept that false flag is a perfectly standard weapon in the arsenal of, of governments and intelligence agencies and is used around the planet for all sorts of um, okay. nefarious means. Okay, Ian, if we, uh, you know, so we have, in theory, one theory, is that Al-Qaeda is just a surrogate for the people that did this demolition? I mean, that's essentially what is being said here. That's yeah, well, I mean, the question is, you know, not does Al-Qaeda exist or not. The question is, who controls Al-Qaeda and who controls any particular Al-Qaeda cell? So, for instance, you know, the Palestinians are claiming that they caught the Israelis red-handed, creating a false Al-Qaeda cell. Now, that may, not, may or may not be true, but, you know, it's a legitimate question to ask. Um, it can happen at any time. Cells can get, can, can get taken over. A whole organization can get taken over and run in the interests of, uh, of somebody quite different. And we know that Al-Qaeda always was. It actually means the list. And it means, as Robin Cook, you know, the British Foreign Secretary, very widely respected guy, he, 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 he told us this in The Guardian shortly before he died of a heart attack. Um, he said Al-Qaeda actually means the list held by the CIA of Arab terrorists when the CIA was backing the Arab terrorists in Afghanistan in the 1980s. So, you know, it's not unreasonable to ask yeah, but, whether but the he, CIA he, actually yeah, but it, gave he, up on this At the same, at the same time, we see the CIA botching so many different operations, you know, over the years of the last few decades. I mean, I'm not they, so they, sure they, they got do. lucky. They got lucky. <laughs> they got lucky with this one. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I'm just trying to trying to flesh this no, out no, right sure, here. That's okay. The, no, 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 that's right. I, I, that's a good, I think you've got a good point there. But the answer to that is you only hear about the operations when they fail. Um, and the CIA guys themselves, you know, if you listen to them carefully, they'll say, you know, well, actually, you know, we've had some fantastic operations which have succeeded. And, one, and, and to succeed fully, of course, nobody would know that they even existed yeah, and as it's, operations. And, and it's very hard to trust a spook. Sorry, Annie, but it's, you know, that's how it is. All right, uh, all right, I'd like to ask all of you the same question you see here. Flash Can I just make another go, point? Go, there, go right Peter. ahead. Go ahead go just ahead. before you go on. Yeah, um, they, uh, this, they flatter 
journalists. The basic message is, we're stupid, you're clever. Now, you know, journalists love to hear that. They've, they've got a lot of a copy to write. They haven't got much time to do it in. They don't really have time to do any research nowadays. So, you know, somebody coming along saying, you know, you're really clever, we're really stupid, they just buy into that so easily. And it's, um, I don't think it's true. I think that I've got a lot of respect for the CIA. I think they're very good at their job. Okay. I'd like to ask you all the same question here, and nice. it's being kind of cynical. Um, all of you write, and you make DVDs, and you go speaking tours. I mean, some people would say, look, this is just a money-making industry. You guys are doing quite well. There's a huge interest out there. No, 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 no. I, I'm just saying what the cynic would say. That's what the cynic would say. Yeah, uh, sure. how, how do you all address that? I, I go, I'd like to go to uh, Richard first. I saw your DVD. I mean, um, you know, it, it did co cost money to make that obviously, and you obviously want it sold. I mean, how do you address this issue of profiting, quote-unquote, off of the 9-11 tragedy? Richard, first. Yeah, there's, there's, I can assure you there, there's no profit. We're usually in the red uh, from month to month. Um, I, I rent a, a bedroom in somebody else's house for $400 a month, so nobody's getting rich here. What we have, and what's important for your audience to realize is that we're, we're talking about evidence, we're trying to get a message to the American people. For instance, why there, is there uh, several tons of molten metal found at the base of all three World Trade Center skyscrapers flowing like lava, the first responders say. The structural engineers find it. It's documented in videos and photos. Uh, molten metal takes about 3,000 degrees but, uh, to, to get it flowing, Fahrenheit. And the fires were only about half of that temperature. So, and, and jet fuel only burns about half of that temperature. So where did these temperatures come from to, to uh, melt all of this metal? Well, it turns out to be molten iron. Molten iron is the byproduct of thermite, an incendiary used by the military to cut through steel like a hot knife through butter. And there's chemical evidence of thermite in the molten metal in the ends of the beams. Richard, in Richard, if I can inter 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 interrupt you with all due respect, found throughout the dust. With all due respect, see, there you go again. Because I, the, the science part of it, I just kind of think, oh my God, I didn't do very well in high school chemistry. I'm trying to think if this makes any sense. And I'm not saying what you're saying isn't true. But my point is the delivery, because I, I, I think that's where a lot of people start questioning the questioners, because this is kind of complicated stuff, okay? And that's why, you know, the political end it's of it's not something. complicated. No, I, and, and, you people, know, and, and, and I'm sure no, you would be a great really teacher. I'm sure you'd be a great teacher, but I can, I'm just trying to put myself in the average person's situation here. But I want to I go back to my question about well, ask making... Them this. I, I, I want to go wait, back to... No, 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 no. I'd like ask to ask... them this. No, but Richard, I need to ask everyone the same <laughs> question, and we'll go back to you. Uh, Ian, how about that charge? You know, this is the 9-11 industry. Um, uh, people are making money off of it. To go, how do you answer that charge? Because well, well, it seems to me that, you know, well, like you have... You ha no, 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 no. You have these websites that go out, and now uh, there's a new generation of counter, and then the counter them, and it just goes around and around the books and the, and the DVDs, the films, the documentaries. It, it, you know, there is this kind of cyclical thing. No, go right no, ahead. Making, I, I don't... I, I, yeah, I don't know anybody who's making any money out of this. I've got a coffee business. Um, perhaps I'd better not plug it here because I'll be accused of trying to make money. But, um, you know, I, I could be earning a lot more money in my coffee business than I do in this. And I had a best-selling book on 9-11. You wouldn't know it from the media here, but actually my book was a non-fiction bestseller. Um, and even that didn't make any money. Um, I think it's actually, you know, if you don't mind me turning this around, Go ahead. Um, I'll let, I can tell you one guy who did make an awful lot of money out of 9-11, and that's Kofa Black, um, the head of the CIA counterintelligence operations department. He was the guy whose intelligence failings, so-called, allowed 9-11 to happen, and he's made an absolute shed load of money. He's, he's, he's a principal in the mercenary company Blackwater, um, which, you know, has been the subject of huge scandal in Iraq with their no-bid contracts. So, you know, once again, they call us conspiracy theorists. They're the conspiracy theorists. They call us trying to make money out of it. Actually, a lot of money was made out of 9-11, and it was made by individuals in the CIA who should have been sacked. It was made by the Vice President of the United States, Dick Cheney, who instituted torture as, an, as a weapon of war. Um, it was made by uh, the American media, 
who had huge v viewing figures. You know, yeah, a lot of money is getting made, um, but it's certainly not by me. I promise you that. My books are open. Okay, and it looks like, as usual, government officials, when they fail, they get rewarded for it. Uh, how do you address that issue? I mean, you know, you do write about this. You do talk about it. I mean, do you get that? that you know, you're just doing this for money. It, it, it's, for fa it's, it's to become popular of fame, things like that. I mean, th you know, this industry it just churns itself around because there's so many different opinions about it. People really enjoy it, too. I've always, I, I tend, to send, tend to think that people find it entertaining, actually. Well, I hope not, because, I mean, we're talking about a, a tragedy, not just for the people who lost their lives on 9-11, but also the millions in the Middle East who've suffered as a consequence in the fallout from 9-11. Um, but I don't think anyone would go into this uh, campaigning for a new inquiry and asking for the truth of the events because they uh, enjoy the profile they get because you just end up being vilified by the mainstream media. All right, media. I'm afraid we've, we've, uh, unfortunately we've run out of time. I want to thank our guests today, Annie Michonne, Richard Gage, and Ian Henschel, and thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. See you next time, and remember, crosstalk rules.